Hi, and welcome to my beginner's guide to RimWorld. This video will guide you through the basics of the game. We will create a new planet together, select a few colonists, toss them on the surface of this one, and build a basic colony which is able to survive a few days. So first off, we have to select the scenario. I will stick with the crash landed scenario because it's a very basic and balanced approach to the game, while the others are more specialized scenarios which make more sense once you know the game a little bit better. Next step is the uh, AI Storyteller. They are pretty easily explained. The AI Storyteller tosses events at you. Good ones, bad ones, like attacks or diseases or beneficial things falling from the sky. A lot of things can happen with the AI. You have to get, you get to choose three of them with different personalities. We're going to stick with Cassandra which is a pretty balanced storyteller. The other one uh, is a pretty laid back storyteller, which uh, influences your game a little bit less. Whereas Randy Random is somebody who tosses events at you quite crazily and quite random, as his name says. The difficulty level levels are pretty easily explained. Peaceful is more for the builder type of experience, while blood and dust is all about the strategy and tactical approach of the game also uh, during the blood and dust in the blood and dust difficulty you get a little bit less rewards out of mineral gathering and basically the game gets harder even in the numbers to begin with i would strongly recommend to choose whatever you want impose yourself as much difficulty as you would like we're starting with the adventure story a pretty good thing to start with if you want a more peaceful approach go for the community builder you can change these difficulties on the run whenever you want to during the game next up is the question iron man or not i, I really like to not be able to save because well i think it's a matter of taste go whatever you want for next up we're creating a world the screen before that was just some uh, basics, how, some configurations on how the planet will be generated. In RimWorld, you can pretty much build a colony on every tile of this planet. Um, these are there are temperate forest tiles, desert tiles, boreal forest, tundra. There's a lot of different biomes to play with, and they offer all a lot of different challenges. To begin with but for beginners i would always uh say start with a temperate forest tile which is uh close to roads and friendly factions you can look here at the fa factions button here this purple house depicts a neutral faction whoever is neutral is willing to trade things with you purple house people are selling high-tech goods the r yellow tents are selling neolithic and tribal wares so i like this place here um as you see here, there are flatland tiles and mountainous tiles. I really like to play with hills because they give you some natural defenses to build your colony around, but both of them are pretty pretty cool. Pick whatever you like. We're playing with some small hills. You get a readout of pretty detailed information of the tile here, but I want to be I, I don't want to focus into that too hard uh, because it all fall it'll all fall together once you get to know the game a little better a bit better but right now it's not that important so we're getting a warning that we're settling too close to foot thicket so these people wouldn't be liking my uh visit my closeness to their settlement so we're going one step farther away next up is the colonist uh screen here you can pick your people to begin the game with you can randomize them as often as you want and you get a readout about what they, who they are. First up the childhood and how they lived their life. Pretty nice story fluff. You get a readout uh, about what they're incapable of, what their traits are and what they have learned and how their health is. Lastly some relations but you can't ignore that. For beginners I would strongly, strongly, strongly advise you to take care um, that you're rolling with people who are not having too many incapabilities. Incapabilities like these, so let's look at uh, Toon. He might be a genetic scientist, but he's incapable of social, so he can't trade with people or interact with prisoners. 
can't feed them, he's not able to cook for himself, he can't do art, and he can't craft things. Basically, Edward Toon is unable to, uh, incapable to live on his own. So, to begin with, try to let your people look more like this. Here we are. Colonists like these won't say no to no, uh, to any type of work, and that's really important to begin with. Once you know how this game works, you can challenge yourself with people that are incapable of things, and it's really fun to do so. But we won't get we don't want to get frustrated to begin with, so we're going to roll with that. Apart from that, really important, and that's really just the only thing that's re really really important is that you have somebody. Uh, whose construction skill is hitting at least five or six points. That's mainly because some of the most important uh, things to build in a colony are needing a certain construction value. Also be careful that your people are not uh, suffering from too hard addictions, or like these for example, or to terrible health conditions. So, um, somebody like Arizon here, she has a bad back, she won't be moving as quick, she has asthma, which requires regular doctor treatments, that's pretty hard to tackle if you're new to the game. This, peop this uh, crowd here is looking quite good. They're not good at mining or cooking, but that's not really uh, terrible because everybody can learn anything. Those little flames here only uh, depict how quickly they will learn. Without flames, they're quite, uh, rather slow. With double flames, they're insanely quick. So, we can start with these three people. Let's press the start button and get to the planet. Also, really, read those uh, hints. They're really good. Most of them are really uh, offering quite valuable informations. So let's get started. The first start is a little bit uh, lengthy because um, the map gets generated and there's a lot of stuff that has to be written down, but it'll get uh, quicker once you load the game again. All right, so we're starting here and our people are falling from the sky. And this is how your average remoral beginning looks like. We're seeing here are people who are just uh, who just uh, jumped out of their drop pods, and we start with a donkey named Dominica. And there's a lot of things lying around here. This is all pretty overwhelming, possibly uh, to begin with. So we're zooming out here, and I'm going to cover the basics. This is the tile we just selected. This is the place uh, we looked a moment ago on the world map. So this is the map how it looks like. On this map are mountain tiles, which are looking like this, trees, stones, which we can uh, use later, berry bushes. And the basic game loop of RimWorld is quite simple. You need to fetch up everything your people need to survive. Your people survive if they can fulfill their needs, which you see on this screen here. Their needs are food, which, well, it's pretty basic, isn't it? Rest, you need some place to rest. Recreation, you don't get, you can't get too bored. Some kind of beauty, comfort, and outdoors, which means if you're never leaving uh, a room, you will slowly go nuts. This all, some, uh, these needs all get into the mood bar, well, if your mood gets too low, your people will uh, fall into men uh, fall into mental breakdowns, and that's where the fun of Rim world begins. But basically, if you can't manage to fulfill these needs, well, without food they'll starve. Without rest, well, they'll just fall uh, fall down and sleep. It's not too terrible. But food will kill you, and the other things like heat and uh, cold can also kill you. But overall, you need some shelter. You need some food. And then you can think about how to expand your little uh, colony. So the big to begin with, it's always a good idea to look around and ask yourself, where do I want to live in the long term? So RimWorld offers you the option to build quite big colonies. So it's always a good idea to uh, rather think big and 
in this scenario we're pretty lucky with our starting uh, point here because we if, if I look here as somebody who has uh, several hundred play, uh, hours of gameplay uh, in his pocket here this is a wonderful uh, place to begin with because we can just uh, set a wall here and a wall here and we're having a large community room where everybody can live and we can begin and if I look around there's some steel in the mountain which we can use later there's some jade in the mountain compacted machinery which we can use the only problem is that there's a warg near me but well there's always something so let's get started shall we in a few minutes we will be having a up a, a base up and running and you won't be knowing what has happened so first off these are the items we started with they're axed out and that's not good because that means they're forbidden to interact with so we're going to into the architect menu issue the order to allow things the order um menu give is the place where you issue orders that have to be done so we're picking here the allow tool and first off we're allowing our people to interact with these items so you see the red axis uh, get crossed out and that's that whenever things are marked like that they are disallowed to interact with sometimes you want that sometimes it really makes sense to uh, forbid something but in this scenario these are our basic materials that we need to live with so we want them and next step is we want to build the room i was talking about so we're going to go into the architect menu again and pick the zone uh, no the structure menu and in the structure menu you see all the basic structures you need we're picking the wall the game now asks you which material you want to pick i want a wood wall and we're building some wall here and a wall here and that's the wall we need don't forget to build some doors because your people need to get in and out as well next step is creating a a stockpile zone stockpile zones are the zones where your game will recognize the items your colony owns as long as items are not lying in a stockpile zone they're just uh, stuff that is lying around on the map as soon as something is uh, lying in a stockpile zone your colony has claimed it for itself and it is your yours to uh, command so to begin with i call out the stockpile zone the whole interior of this room and let's drop out the pause and get the game flowing so the colonists immediately start moving ng is bringing up some wood and uh pulls that to the walls and this is the automatic uh procedure your colonists go through if you don't configure your colonists everybody will do the work at hand and will try to do things you can set up work schedules in this uh, window here you can see if somebody is doing a work or not so if we look at Thodian Thodian will do firefighting he will be a patient you should enable that always he will be a doctor he will do bed rest, he will do basic tasks, he won't be doing wardening, he won't be handling animals, and so on. Um, this is a very basic uh, approach and it only defines if people are doing something or not. If you want to get that a little bit more complex, you uh, hit this button here and then you get a priority system where um, the lower the number, the lower the priority. So. If you if we would say like I want NG to be the only person here um, focusing into the construction work above everything else, I would be left clicking this until we have the, the one, and this ends up with NG preferring everything above the construction above everything else, and only if no construction work is lying around anymore, she will try to do anything else. This gets overridden by uh, their basic needs for food and such so that's all we need to begin with um ng now set up the walls and now she starts to build a roof your colonists automatically build roofs over uh rooms that are connected to walls you need to uh change that manually if you want that to stop 
but you shouldn't be stopping that because an indoors area is very very welcome to for your uh, colonists and your your people won't be considering some some kind of shelter without a roof over the hats you wouldn't do that either so let's wait until ng is done with that there's quite a big roof to build gotta say and you see here i put a pause on that because i wanted to show you um how it looks like before right before it's done right now this is not really a room and when i put my mouse over that you look at this area here where it shows now outdoors 21 degree when i mouse over here it shows unroofed and the number behind the in the brackets shows you how many tiles are unroofed as of now and as long as this room is unroofed those people won't be considering it a, a real shelter so now it's an indoors room and now your people will be happy but we can't be happy without a place to sleep. So let's get into the architecture menu and go into the furniture selection. Here we'll see all the wonderful things we need to live a normal life. So we're going to build a bed for everyone. And we're also going to build a table where your people can uh, sit and eat from. So we'll build a table and let's build some stools, one for everybody, and that's that. So as we can see here, we're, all, we're not having enough wood anymore, so we should be chopping some more. So we're going to order some wood chopping here. And I'm just uh, holding my left mouse button and dragging this here. And as you see here, some trees get a circle on them and some don't. Um, the chopping, the chop wood order only aims at trees that are old enough to yield wood. If we look at that, this guy here is 55% grown, and this here is only 27% grown. So if they don't get selected, that's not a bug. It's actually the game waiting for them until they are ready. So to get these tr trees cut earlier, I will uh, tell Thodian to focus the grow job and the plant cut job. So growing is for your crops, and plant cutting is for your uh, plant cutting. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to tell Myers to do the hauling. These jobs are, this table here um, shows all the stuff you can do in the rim world and it's quite lengthy and it can uh, just uh, smite you down if you look too close at it, but don't worry, we're, we're going to get through this. So now we're setting up the beds. NG is grabbing the materials and you see here, um, one guy is cutting the trees, Myers is hauling the wood, like I told him to, and NG is building the stuff with the materials that are uh, getting produced here. So at the end of day one, we're going to have a roof over our heads, a table to, to eat at, and we're having some storage area where everything is lying around. And these are some other basics that are... Uh, really important so you already learned how to build a room we can now look at our people and uh, see what they do after all the work has been done but we're we're still busy aren't we we now have fulfilled fulfilled the needs for rest we're going to need food though um we're starting with packaged survival meals enough to sustain a few days but we won't be able to, to sustain the future. So we're going to uh, get into the production area. We're going to need a butcher table. That's the place where we're going to butcher uh, hunted animals and we're going to need a stove. You can select either electric stove or a fuel stove. We're going for an electric stove because we're going electric here. Electricity is being produced by in the power menu. So you go for the wood fire generator and this here just burns wood and delivers you power for that it's a basic way to produce power there are also other ways like the wind turbine or camp fuel you can research other ways but wood fire generators are very simple you just need to cut some wood some trees and then done so i'm ordering now ng to do some work you can also select a colonist right click on your uh, project and then we set, we tell her to prioritize that and immediately she walks off and goes to work on that you can also clear that prioritized work and you, if you uh have a change of uh, hard 
and let's see. So the generator needs steel and components, so these are more uh, rare materials, so use them wisely. And congratulations, now we have power. For this to work, it, all, uh, it of course need, needs fuel. So 75 units of wood, we only have 37 left, so let's issue some more chopping orders to get some more wood. There we go. So NG wants to eat something and we're going to let her. And after that, I'm going uh, to order her to build some new things. Let's uh, order her to build that stove. And after that, the butcher table. So you see here, um, the stove immediately connected with a little power cord to the generator. That's because the stove was uh, in the vicinity of the generator, but you can also get over to the power menu and build power conduits to connect things. You see here this purplish line shows you that uh, this is connected correctly. So there we go. So now we have technically everything we need to sustain ourselves, but how to do that. Um, RimWorld has a system of crafting tables and basically every crafting table, every crafting mechanism, every building mechanism in this game works exactly the same. Be it the building of the, the production of cloves, food, drugs, weapons, whatever. So let's get into this. The system uses with a builds uses a builds menu. So you click there and this opens now the the work orders for the electric stove. We want to cook food at the electric stove. So we click the add build button and I want simple meals. That sounds good. Now I can do that one time, but well, our people need food regularly. So we go, go in here. Oh, we want to do that until we have a amount of X. That sounds great. Do that until we have 10 uh, things here. Great. So that's that. This now means that your colonists will always try to get at this electric stove and cook until 10 simple meals are there. You will need to configure somebody for uh, the cooking job to let that happen, but as long as there are ingredients, the persons responsible for the cooking will now try to cook 10 simple meals soon as often as they can. So we can't cook meals without food though. So we're going to go to the butcher table and at the butcher table, you can either butcher creatures or make kibble, but that's basically pet food. But we want the butcher creature. We do, we get, go here and we're going to do that forever. And if we look here, now we'll always try to butcher creatures as soon as they are available. You can press the details button where you can configure these things a lot more, uh, a lot deeper, but the basic settings are perfect and you don't need to change them. It'll on only chop up animal corpses and it won't chop up human-like corpses because that would be gross. So you can leave it like that. And this is a basic chain. So your people will try to uh, butcher creatures and they will cook simple meals out of that. But if you don't want to kill poor animals, you can also go into the architecture menu, call out a growing zone, just like that, and order your people to grow some crops here. Here in this button, you can select which crops can will be grown. Um, the stats of the plants vary a little bit, but we're going to stay with the uh, potatoes for here. And you see here, Thodian gets over there and sows out some potatoes. You can also harvest from wild berry bushes and harvest from uh, some wild hair roots. They are uh, medicine. And yeah, these are options to gain some food with. So we're going to harvest some of those berry bushes. You see some berries getting dropped. And Myers now picks up the berries and uh, hauls them to the stockpile zone. And who's my cook? Thodian. So I can now tell him to cook here, picks up the berries and transforms them into a simple meal. There we go. Um, for 
the animals you're going you need to uh, to hunt some animals you need to equip some firearms so let's, uh, you need to right click the firearm most things in this game are right click uh, sensitive and you can interact with them so to actively hunt an animal there are two ways to do that you can either go for the hunter's job, let's prioritize that, and you click the wildlife menu. You see here, the wildlife menu shows you everything that lives in this biome. It's quite a lot of animals. I would strongly suggest you to only hunt animals that are, are having a low percentage of revenge, which is shown here. The turkeys, for example, are perfectly easy to hunt, so let's uh, get that uh, here. This uh, column is hunting, this is taming. So we want these turkeys to be hunted. So I put up NG to be a hunter and now let's uh, wait until she goes for that job. She's meditating a little, which, which fills her recreational needs. You can also build items for recreation. I would strongly suggest you always to build a horseshoe pin. That's a, a uh, recreational uh, item your colonists will use to uh, chill at. And there we go. NG now starts to hunt. You can also look at the health of the turkey and see it got wounded in the left leg. Okay, it takes a while until she uh, gets that done, but uh, she aborts mission. But this turkey will be dying in three hours anyway, so we can collect it tomorrow. At some time of the day, your people will sleep. You can change your uh, schedule here in this uh, menu here. If you want to adjust that in some uh, kind of way, you can do that. So the turkey is now dead. We're skipping the rest of the night until tomorrow. And now um, your cook is also the person who's responsible for um, the butchering. So Thodian now uh, gets over there, picks up the uh, turkey and butchers it down. There's another thing which is qu uh, quite important. Food will spoil after some days. So berries are spoiling in 13 days, but other food like meat, for example, here we go, is spoiling in two days. To uh, avoid that, you can freeze your food. And this is really, really uh, one of the most basic things um, to put up is a freezer. So to put up a freezer, I build a new room, put up a door in that, and I go into the temperature menu. In the temperature menu, you can build certain items which uh, allow you to regulate temperatures. You get, uh, you take the cooler and make sure that the blue side is uh, facing into the uh, room, which should be your freezer, and put up rather a, f uh, a cooler more than less because. Um, the bigger the room, the harder it gets to cool it, and sometimes events like heat waves happen, and the higher the difference between inside and outside temperature, the more coolers uh, are needed to uh, keep a uh, certain temperature up and running. So now Myers is uh, doing his... No, Myers is just hauling the stuff over there, and NG is... Uh, Still busy hunting those turkeys, but we're going to order her away from that because she should be busy busy building things. So I let her hunt that one as well, but now she's uh, building that. There we go. So I'm out of wood, so she's not building any more uh, walls, so... We gotta keep chopping wood to uh, sustain our uh, reserves. And as you see here, it's getting less and less, so we have to forge uh, further and further. But luckily we're living in a uh, temperate forest biome, so it's no problem. And NG now uh, prefers the hunting over the building because she has no more... Uh, 
materials to work with, so... Your colonists are quite smart when it comes down to priorities on their own, but if you really want effective colonists, you have to micromanage them. But we, ha we can already uh, configure them coolers. So with a cooler you can uh, set up a target temperature. We want a target temperature of something like minus 9 degrees, so we uh, lower the target temperature until we hit that spot. Perfect. So. Now NG is building those walls, and now we're having a room which uh, can get cooled by the coolers. To make sure that your food ends up in there, you create a new stockpile zone, and now we configure a stockpile zone. So we get in there, and first off, we clear out everything and forbid everything. And now we say, we only want those foods inside there. Boom. And now I call the priority a little bit higher, say it's the preferred place to drop in food and now my people start to haul the food in there the temperature is dropping and the, to the minus degrees and now it's frozen and it won't spoil anymore boom done and now you know pretty much the most uh, basic ways of uh, doing things in RimWorld because every production cycle works pretty much the same like the food production. I will set up one more uh, simple production, like let's put up a electric tailor bench um, where you can produce clothing. So I'll force, N force NG to do that. And we're going to set up one more thing and that's a research bench because research is the last topic I need to cover up aside with the combat to leave you ready to conquer the rims. So you see here the tailor uh, table, the tailor bench is ready and we ha have gathered some bird skin. I want to do some clothing out of that bird skin so I get over to the tailor bench, open the build menu, it starts to look a little bit more uh, familiar, doesn't it? So we add a bill and now we can select which kind of clothing we want to do. Oh, well, let's do a bird leather t-shirt, why not? So the game now sets up the bill. In this scenario, I feel like it's quite good to do only one t-shirt. You can look up the details of it. You see here the amount of work necessary, the amount of ingredients necessary. You can allow which kind of uh, materials are uh, get to be used. Take a look into these menus. They're quite self-explanatory and super useful. But uh, you see here, it's uh, basically the same process. We're now only say, seeing that we only need to see through that somebody is prioritizing the tailoring job. You get the smithing job for smithing uh, duties. You get the mining job for mining. You can mine out things by just clicking on them and issuing an order like here. Or you go into the order menu and go like here. If you play the game a little bit longer, you, started to, you, you will start to notice that things work mm, quite similarly and the user interface is really um, not that complicated to be quite honest. So let's wait until we have set up that science table and you see here NG is now finishing that bird skin t-shirt and that's how you craft clothes. It's quite similar to crafting uh, food. You can do different things here. So let's uh, wait until, who was it again? Thodian uh, has cut us some trees. And now I'll call NG to uh, build that research bench for us. But we see here we're out of steel, so we have to mine out some steel. I don't have anybody ordered to the mining job yet, so let's order Myers to prioritize that. Myers is really bad at mining, but he will get better while he does that. Everybody gets better uh, at stuff while he's doing that, so if you want to improve somebody's skills, send them doing that more often. So right now, well, mining steel is a really lengthy process with somebody uh, with mining too. Skills can scale up to 20, so Myers is far away from being a pro but he will mine out the steel that we need. Sadly, he's too dumb to just haul that stuff on his own back there, but we pa I, pa I, like I like to pause the game and force them to by micromanaging that. 
And yeah, so NG is now building the research table. So, research on RimWorld is quite importantly um, something to do to progress in the game. You have to uh, set up research as a priority and then people will do that. You can't order somebody to research manually because it's the game just doesn't allow you to. But once you have the table up, you can access the research menu and you are having a wide array of technologies available. I would strongly recommend you to look, take a look at the geothermal power, at the battery technology, the solar panels, just to name a few really useful early game uh, technologies. So we're researching the batteries now. If you click here, you get an explanation what it does, what it unlocks. Everything is clickable and it explains itself. And uh, there we go. So the last thing I wanna talk about is combat. If you need to fight, you can draft your people and uh, control them uh, like in a real-time strategy game. So to do so, I mark them and press the R button and now they're in draft mode. We can right click now and issue orders to them. And uh, just in a real-time strategy game, they're following my orders. So we see here, there was the lacking steel. I allow them to carry it home. And now we're going to kill some uh, animal together in this uh, manner. So let's go for that work before it hunts one of my own uh, people. So I bring up my people over here and uh, I'll select Thodian with the revolver. And now I press the B button or you can just click the item here and select the work. And I order NG to shoot as well. I'm keeping Myers here uh, back there because he's having a melee weapon and now my people start shooting at the uh, warg and yeah. It's pretty simple, yet uh, keep in mind that friendly fire is a thing in this game so you, you want to take care that people are not standing in the line of fire and uh, you see here now the warg goes into revenge. That means the warg is trying to kill somebody of your people. Um, I really like to abuse the uh, AI of the game a little bit and uh, I'm sending Myers here and you see the work is uh, chasing Myers now while NG and Thodian are allowed to shoot and uh, that's how you kill things in RimWorld. So the work is now downed, I click the hunting order and now NG will finish the hunt in a moment. She eats some packaged meal beforehand. And now she's uh, hunting that and uh, if you issue the hunting order on some downed animal it, you can't finish them while they're lying underground. So you see here now she's uh, not able to haul that work back home because there's no room uh, available for that. So we're going to click here and I'm going to allow corpses in the stockpile zone, at least animal corpses. So there we go. Let's try that again, and now I can haul it. Um, this is really important because um, frozen corpses last forever until they get butchered, so... Congratulations, you now know the other basics on how to survive a game of RimWorld. You can now get your people food, get your people clothing, know how to build buildings, know, to how, know how to kill things. These are the other basics you will need. There are a lot of different things that are uh, that the game offers to you, like caring uh, about your wounds that I didn't uh, explain here, but I think you'll be able to figure them out from here on. If not, just look up other tutorials, there's pretty much help for every topic out there. I hope that I was able to bring you some, some interest to this game and with these basic guidelines you'll be having a, smart, a, a little snuggly little uh, colony up and running, which will keep your people alive. But not, much, not much more than that, the rest is up to you. Whether you build a really big fortress or a cozy little town, it's all up to you. Hope that helped you, feel free to drop me a comment down below and see you guys next time. Bye bye.